be before you long. So let's talk about it. Um, I'm just looking at some of the comments. Um, there's an article. I'll probably leave it in the description box. Uh, Terry Crews is the worst kind of black man. I'm going to do another video, but I find it interesting how when black men have a problem with something someone says that's a black female celebrity, they typically attack that particular woman and they go in on her. Whether it was Lonnie Love a few day, weeks ago, or Amanda Sales, who's often in the media shitting on black men, or Amber Phillips, or whoever. We typically go after them and not the entire black race, or we specifically say that black feminist or XYZ. But whenever a black man does something that sisters don't like, he's somehow the epitome of all black men. Whether it's Terry Crews now or something ASAP Rocky said or some rap, some rapper said some stuff, they tend to be a reflection of all black men, which I think is kind of trash. We're going to talk about that in a different video, though. But So Terry Crews is getting the smoke. <laughs> and the black females have turned their back on him. The ironic thing about this whole situation is Terry Crews has been that guy for the last 20 years. He's been that men are toxic and evil and bad and the NFL is horrible and the atmosphere is bad. And I, You know, I always took that as he just couldn't hack it. He was too soft to be around all those. I don't like to use the word alpha because that's how you describe animals, but high testosterone men. He couldn't cut it. That environment is tough to be in. And he clearly couldn't make it and couldn't cut it, and he didn't have a long NFL career. But he's always talking about how trash it was and how bad it was back then. And then he went into acting. Now, I'm not a fan of Terry Crews. Never was a fan of his behavior and his, the way he acts and whatnot. I was disappointed in him as an actor. I thought he was going to be our Jean-Claude, our, uh, our, our version of Arnold, you know, getting all the action roles and whatnot. But he chose to do comedies and stuff. White Chicks was trash and all that type of nasty stuff. So, never really been a fan of him. So, you add the, the roles he picked and then the stuff he does that's kind of coonish a little bit. A little bit coonish. Like, I don't like that. Like, I don't like Lizzo. I don't like Glozell. I don't like Winston from New Girl. Like, I don't like people who act that way for money. Like, that's not, I'm just not a fan of that. And he does that a little bit to me, too. And unfortunately, his size and physique and whatnot has not manifested into any p good roles or anything that you can be like, oh, like growing up, we had Action Jackson. And, but other than that, we ain't really had much. I mean, if you were one of them 70 kids, you had all those black exploitation films and all them old black dudes. But growing up, we ain't had too many. So it would have been cool if he could have been that type of character. And of course, we know Hollywood and they don't want to give him the roles and all other stuff. I got that part. But... I was disappointed as far as his acting skills and what he's done, but that's not even the point of this video. He was that way, and for, since I can remember, I did, however, not have an issue because I did watch his, uh, when he had the show about his family, that was like a positive, healthy, family show. That That's one thing that was good, like his real show, not the TV show that all got canceled that he did, except for Everybody Hates Chris. And even the role he played in Everybody Hates Chris was not bad either. Like, he was a hardworking, blue-collar black man providing for his family. So that role was good as well. I can't even knock that. Not that I even watched that show that much. But it's okay. He, he has had some stuff that I did like in his work. I can't lie. But as far as him speaking this personally, just never liked him being that dude. He's like the male feminist in the group. He's like the dude... Like, you know how Charlamagne now, every time somebody says something, like, do you still stand bitch in 2019? Or, why is, why is being, why are you saying pause? Like, he's that guy. <laughs> and those guys are annoying. Get the freak out of here. Go somewhere else. This is locker room talk. We don't like that guy. But, his whole career, he's been that guy. He's been the one that kind of leans towards more men are trash and women are sugar and spice and everything nice. And yet, for whatever reason, this last situation with him and Gabrielle Union, has shifted that, and now he's the epitome of all black men. Amanda Cyber, this is what black men need by stand up by black women. And the problem I have with that because when it comes to him saying his experience, and he can say I didn't have the experience she had, that's fine. But I guess people took it as him saying, you know, how animated because he was real animated in the conversation. I have never look. The man's a broken buck, and that situation was a whole setup, and it seemed like. They set that up on purpose to get him to come out and say that. Like, that's what it said to me. Now, we all know about the situation happening with him and getting 
touched or whatever. And we clown him, we joke about him because is he right that, yeah, you the big black guy, you do it, you going to uh, lose your career, you might go to jail, get blacklisted, whatever. But he didn't do that, and he kind of in that situation anyway. So he was better off swinging on the dude. I mean, real talk. He was better off doing that. But we don't want to minimize how and how they wear probably propositions like that happen all the time. I remember this old dude I used to work with back in the day. He worked at the hospital in Cali that they put, they shot the TV, the soap boppers, you know, the hospital. And he was telling me how, like, back when he was young and stuff like that, because he a fake Cali dude in New York. And he was all like, yeah, I used to work in the hospital because my aunt was, like, the administrator. This is back in the early 80s, I think. Um, he was like, yeah, I was, like, 17. I was working in the hospital, and my supervisor, because he was doing some stuff, like, starting at the bottom of the barrel, cleaning rooms or whatever like that. Good-ass job for him. Young as hell, still in high school. Aunt was working there. And I guess his superior hit it on him and tried to come on him. And he just quit. I'm like, your aunt was like an administrator. Why do you ain't snitching? Why do you ain't go tell? Why do you ain't, you know what I mean? Like, but he just quit. But so I don't want to minimize the fact that in that situation, those things probably do happen and those type of approaches do happen. However, you do have to have a testic of fortitude to let that know that that can't happen again. And. He tried to do the uh, bag of the Me Too male version. And the funny thing is people say that people stuck up for him and looked out for him. But ironically, there were people who were really trying to say, like, his situation didn't really matter. Like, there were women who were really trying to, like, the white feminists, they didn't co-sign that. Yeah, you had Tawana Burke and you had a couple female celebrities that are always in some trouble, in some shit. Always, you know, going something going on who were like, yeah, we got your back. But... A lot of women really weren't trying to correlate his situation to the Me Too or Time's Up situation. They weren't. So, looking at that whole situation, he already doesn't have a lot of male support or male men who follow him or like him, right? Then, he realized when he did the Me Too things, he kind of out with Hollywood. And that dude who he went to jail, whatever, uh, whoever he snitched on, is like still working again. And got a pay. He, he not fired. Apparently, that dude was too big to fail because he's not gone yet. He got suspended for a period of time, probably was pay, and he's back in Hollywood. So it's like, you wait all that out, and then there's this situation, and he's on his last legs. Um, he got some shitty-ass movie coming out with Ludacris that looks terrible. It's going to go straight to Showbox. <laughs> Nobody's going to watch that shit. Um, so I think that this was more, to me, the whole situation just seemed like he's a broken buck, and he ain't got many options left. He's probably blowing a lot of bridges. It's not like he's been a guy his whole career for black men to come behind him and support him. Even when he does say things that are right and good, he ends up capitulating and apologizing. He said something about, you know, Whoopi Goldberg and uh, who was Jenny McCarthy was roasting him years ago in a view because he said the fathers are important. Then he said some kind of slick sideways shit that people didn't like when he said that Sylvester Stallone was like his dad. And like, no, don't be doing that. You say he's a mentor, he helps you out, but don't, don't, don't call no white man your daddy that's damn near your age. But yeah, like he he got in trouble for that. Then something else he said that he was correct and I agree with him was on some traditional family structure type stuff, but he apologized and capitulated to the feminists and whatnot. So it's like he's been that dude for a long time and he's always put his foot in his mouth and sometimes he just, yeah. But it's interesting seeing how he's being a, the epitome of all black men now all of a sudden. And now he's the face of toxic masculinity and all this other nonsense that doesn't exist. When he hasn't been that guy for 20 years, like he really hasn't been that guy. So apparently, women, black women, have turned their backs on him. He's done. He's canceled. <laughs> and I see all the, you know, the divest chicks and the colorists and the black stands are all doing their videos about him. And see, black women, you ain't got to do nothing for black men because this black man, like, how is he the epitome of all black men or representing all black men? When he's been on your side the whole goddamn time. Men don't bang with Terry Crews, never have. But now he finally said, you know what? My responsibility, my fiduciary responsibilities to my wife. Now, he do kind of sound like a little bitch, too, when he said, well, I asked my wife what she thinks, and she said I should. Like, come on, my guy. Like, stop. But he probably secured his bag by saying what he said and did what he did. So it was like, huh? And Gary Union, not a fan of her at all. LBGT, alphabet people, chastising black folk. I'm not. So, 
I mean, the only thing I had an issue with, well, can say, like, she complained about them having issues with her hair. That's a no-go. Like, that's none of your business. But all the other stuff she was complaining about, like, Jay Leno told a joke about people eating dog, which is a joke that we all make, and it's actually true. <laughs> um, and it's Jay Leno, like, goofy-ass dude. Simon, okay, smoking indoors is, like, a no-go. Like, that's illegal in his state and all that. But it's his show, so it's like, he's the talent. He's probably some smug, arrogant prank. We all know that from watching him years ago on uh, America's Idol. So it's like, that's who he is. And he probably he clearly doesn't care about the law or the rules of the place. So it's like, okay, it bothers her. I can understand that gripe, too. But it's like, she's not going to win. She's not the talent. She just the help in that situation. I, she's right, but it's like, you're not going to win that battle right there. But other than that, I don't know about any the asking people about their proper... Like, she's trying to... That's the thing, too. People try to go to other people's houses and just rearrange shit. Like, she, she might... She's married to Dwayne Wade, and her stock is a little bit elevated, and, you know, she thinks she's up there, and it's like, you're trying to go to other people's houses and move their furniture around, and they're like, no. Telling you how to do stuff with your hair and all that, foul. You know, smoking around you when you have issues in health and it's not good for you understandable, but all the other stuff she be t complaining about, the jokes, like, come on, it's Jay Leno, their jokes, the trying to, like, implement freaking they, them, and, and pronouns and stuff, and getting people to communicate like that, because you've, you know, participated in the child abuse against your stepson, nah, but anyway, that's just my video, Terry Crews is a broken buck, right, like, I think he did what he did because he's being self-interested. He's broken. He doesn't have black male support. He doesn't have support of the clearly of his colleagues in Hollywood, but the people that matter. And people keep saying, like, he, um, she stood up for him, whatever, but she didn't have anything to lose for sticking up for him. Like, she was on some outside. She didn't have anything to do with his casting calls, his movies, his agent, the agency he was with. Like, that's a, not a fair connection that people are making. Emmanuel says, I say, yeah, he stood up for you, and you couldn't return a favor, but, like, he apparently has something to lose with this American Got Time situation. So, it's not like, that's not the same thing. It's easy for you to stand on your soapbox when it ain't got no effects on you to speak out against somebody's situation. But then, like, you want him to do the same thing, but it actually can affect him, probably, if he came out co-signing what you said or whatever. Who knows? He probably said he said he didn't have that experience. One thing I didn't understand either when he said that sexism, I can't speak to it because I'm a man, but sexism is genderless. A woman can be sexist towards women. A woman can be sexist towards men. Like, I didn't get that part either. Like, he just be talking and don't be saying shit. Like, nobody be saying and tweeting and whatnot. Um, he, he was in Crackdown, the game, and that shit was ass, and he got this movie with Luda, but... You know, Marlon and them boys ain't trying to do white chicks too. And I know he probably hurting for it. But yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with this man's career. I mean, he's going to probably have to do more daytime talk shows and marriage guy talent and hosts and stuff like that. But, mm hmm. Disappointed in Terry Crews. But yeah, RIP <laughs> Terry Crews. You're a broken buck.